<coughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Featuring today our one versus one in the darkness of Simwa. Yes, indeed, Simwa. Fighting shall be Smart Hell, fighting as the first infant edition. He's about level 14, and I suspect Dive Kick is also his opponent, is about that same level. Fighting for the Wehrmacht, though, not for the Americans. Fighting for the 116th Panzer Division, he's going to take on those Yankees. Well, of course, Martel's plan is to kill those Krauts. We are seeing a two engineer start up from him. It looks like he's even bothered actually putting down a rally point right under the strategic point, in fact, so that way you can actually sort of queue up taking points right away, in fact. And then meanwhile, the engineers are setting up to secure these two points. Again, not unusual, in fact, it's a capping. Order as they called for the Americans, for example, might be with one in the near squad to go through here. Then something like this. I mean, basically just securing this while the Americans then hook up and sort of s head inwards. So in fact, just secures all the strategic points. Definite one way of doing it. Two pioneers out for dive kick and a false connect squad to start out with. Nothing unusual or wrong there. So moving out for the fatherland, for glory, for honor, and hopefully some beer. And there we go, the first rifle squad has arrived for Smart Hell. Engineers creeping up through the east. And oh, cheeky, he's actually making that catwalk thing. Very cheeky, again, not entirely sure how you do it. Again, I'm not really the master of those things. More tactics and strategy, not little small tips like that, but still. Fascinating, again, it's certainly a you know, indicator that he's definitely a bit higher known than your usual novices. First guys are moving towards the east though. Pioneers following up. The rifle squad on the way for Smart Hill. <laughs> Hiccup. Second false guy squad out for dive kick. <laughs> but why? Hiccups. All are lovely. A bit of wire right here to of course ensure no one just runs in here against taking these points. Although not fully wired off perhaps. Perhaps it is. Engine is going to be running up there. Quick commander fire though. We are seeing additional false guns. In fact looks like he's going to focus right there. He's not going to be running into town right away. In the meanwhile could be that smart term might be going for the fuel point. Not unusual again to see on Suma in particular to you know see someone try to harass the fuel point right next to the base, which is why Dive kick has in fact wired it off. It doesn't protect against engineers because they can just cut the wire, but against riflemen, it's certainly going to do its little bits. Engineers moving up, coming under fire from the pioneers. MP 40s and grease guns fire at each other. False guys could be adding in a bit as well. And the riflemen right there are getting stopped by the MG 42 bunker. Suffering a bit right there before being run off. And now the engineers are coming under fire from car 98Ks. So for no real major engagement from either player. Folks can are though in sort of range of each other, so in that case they can quickly support each other, which is good. Ladies and gentlemen, it is in fact good. We are seeing additional rifle being sent southwards, perhaps to try and deal with any sort of harassment there. Of course, question is how long will these folks going to be cooperating? Rifleman continuing towards the German area. Pioneer sneaking up behind. Folks going here and rifle could be making a rush for the house. Who shall make it? Who shall win the race? Apparently the folks going ears. That was a bit interesting. Can have a bit of from time to time. Interesting enough. Also, he's moving over his folks going here instead of there because he's also got an MG42 here. In that case, it would have been best to actually have the folks going ears there so they can cut off the retreat. Instead, he's actually allowing Smartel to get away right there. That was a bit, you know. I think a bit of a missed opportunity right there to sort of, you know, really do some damage to the Americans, although still down to half health, one man down, but could have been greater. Could have been much greater, in fact, couldn't even have run him off. And meanwhile, the Wiasing Americans pushing down here, so of course now Dive Kick will be forced to respond. He could, for example, you know, put some barbed wire down there. Not unusual to see players do that. In this case, the Riven would not be able to do anything. Going for the victory point right there. Going for the munitions, a bit of lots of harassment for both sides. MD42 suppressing the riflemen. Volkswagen S charging in. A sniper coming up for dive kick. So two Volkswagen S MG sniper again. A start that a lot of you know higher ranking Wehrmacht players like to do. It can rain an American player. Oh, 
Retreat, retreat, retreat. You're out in the open, you're out in the open. Oh, low health. Dive kick. What are you... Oh. Focus fire right there. Nicely done, of course, by Smartel. Less great, though, by dive kick track to run up to him again. I mean... Again, let's just briefly explain. Rifemen gain an advantage as you get closer up in terms of, you know, how much damage they can do per second. And the false guys do not. In fact, they have a small advantage as long range, but it's minute compared to the amount of Rifemen get up range, up close. So again, you do not move up close to Rifemen with semi-automatic rifles. I repeat, you do not. It's very important. You do not, unless you have something like MP4 team, and then not across open ground, and certainly not towards opponents in heavy cover. That was... Not really well handled by dive kick right there. Sniper opens up. We are seeing him now, but of course a bit of attrition. But again, dive kick certainly just took a huge well, kick to his resources. Rifen sneaking in from the south. Pioneers could be going down. Dive kick retreat. Rukzuk. Rifen getting sniped in the meanwhile though. Oh, they run into the house, which could give the sniper more time to fire up. False guys need to move in and take the we point or something. No, oh, the MG's turned. The rifle are moving in. Smartel certainly playing a bit smart. Now we are in fact seeing a full retreat from dive kick after a bit of a blunder right there tactically. More false gunners are moving in. Rifle though are heavily wounded. Ooh, one shot could in fact lose Martel and Rifle right there. Sniper though makes it out of there. False gunners now holding up behind a ditch and some fences. Rifle and us moving in, swinging for the fences. And going in for the fuel point right there. Heavy pressure. I mean, so far all that dive kick's really managed is taking the victory points, but I mean. Not all well, and my goodness, Martel has, has an awful lot of munitions. I mean, he's also got engineers, so I mean, an idea for him might be to, you know, actually lay down some mines if possible. Fultz goes retreating to the house. Smartel retreats. Smartily. <laughs> oh, the pun. Engineers are getting sniped. Sniper Koenig opens up. Gets another engineer, forcing the rest back. And not too long to Gamescom now, just a few days. And there we go, he's gone infantry, he's laying down mines. Great, great smart hill, really great. Using all those munitions to really make it that much more painful for dive kick to advance. Brilliant, clever, great. And a bit of mining from dive kick as well. Also great, also lovely, wondrous, magical even. But I mean, here's a problem actually for dive kick. I mean, he's been all lost resources and he's behind with his Krieg barracks. He's in fact getting another sniper. So he's in fact quite a bit behind. Smartel is floating a lot of resources. In fact, he's going for. Well, I wouldn't call it an armored car rush because he's got plenty of manpower that could have been spent on extra rifleman squads. So I think he's making a bit of a mistake there. At least in my opinion. And of course, you could go for an observation post, exchange that. But, anyways, I mean, he's rather putting on some pressure. And again. I mean, Dive Kick's actually invested too heavily in the first end, though he's now he's actually unprepared for an armored car assault. And that's going to come very soon. And these pioneers need to get away. They are not in a condition to fight. Two snipers are rifle retreating. MG42 sending. Oh, missed right there. He could perhaps. Oh, no, he's actually moving. Priorities, you know, get the MGs first. Definitely missed an opportunity right there to perhaps even knock out an entire rifle squad there from Smartel. That wasn't quite as wondrously executed as could have been hoped. Mines going off there though, doing a bit of damage, doing a bit of killing to the Wehrmacht. Armored car moving out, probably getting the armored skirts first, which is good. Good, in effect. Sniper team moving out, so far nine kills. Armored car moving out, ooh, mine, mine, mine. No. And there we go, not a single kill, but they are heavily wounded, and thankfully, hopefully, he does have a trio center up. No, he doesn't. He's in fact gaining a weapon support center, probably to try and get those crouch snipers. Armor Khan pioneers are fighting a dis... Armor Khan... Well, Armor... False gunners, anyways. Fighting, false gunners are not going to be winning that, coming out of fire from the rifleman. Again, dive kick is woefully unprepared for this, and Smart Hill could in fact just be rushing into his base and do a lot of damage with this armored car. In this case, he might actually be respecting his opponent a bit too much and expecting, you know, mines on the road or even in front of the Krieg bags. MG42 is retreating. Fuel point going up. And he's actually got enough munitions to actually lay down a Greyhound mine right here, which would be pretty nasty. I mean, Greyhound mines are pretty powerful. They are amongst the most powerful mines in the game, and unlike the Teller mine, which is the other, this one actually also goes off with infantry. And turn your well placed, and there we go, little trick. 
plays a mine right in front of the Krieg Bags again. If you're worried that an armored cow will go in and lay down a Greyhound mine in front of it, which again is also something some players do, but again, it's not so common anymore amongst the higher ranked players because again, there's the threat of this or a mine somewhere else. And plus, players tend to be better prepared generally nowadays for armored cars. And we've seen two snipers on the way. Force Martel in response to the Vermax two snipers. Armored car hiding here. We're seeing the 50 caliber up. Rifleman, ooh, slightly bad position. Medic pack going up for the MG42. Ooh, Rifleman heavily wounded. Nasty. And let's go look at dive kick of the 116th Panzer Division. Pioneers are coming under fire. They need to retreat. Panzer up there. Kanone Klar. Grenadiers on the bay. Fortress hanging up position in this house. Pioneers looks like they will be getting out of there. And Guineas with Minesweepers, he's now of course really expecting Mines, whereas Divekick's not really bothering with Minesweepers. Smartella on the other hand, playing smartly, is of course preparing for Mines. Pack moving up, and there we go, nice hit on the armored car. And of course it pulled straight behind the building, thus avoiding the arc of fire of the anti-tank gun. Well handled. Well handled right there. And again, dive kick is heavily pressured on all sides. No doctrine as of yet. American sniper, a bit. I think this is a bit reckless. And there we go. Oh, both German snipers miss. How bollocks! That's just embarrassing. And he's like, oh, poo. And then the German snipers just go scheiße. That was bloody lucky. And there we go. Oh, careful, smart hill. Oh dear, he could in fact now lose it. Pioneer's moving in, there we go. Oh. Very close, very close. Oh, he shoots! Oh, he shoots the American rifleman! He. Oh! Oh, he could have gotten a. Oh! Rifleman now suffering a bit though, but that was. Oh! Dear. But he got the other one! Oh! No idea why Smartel did that. No idea. That was just a waste. Just a waste of good sniper. And again, anti tank and camp on right. We are seeing grenadiers. No panic for them. We are seeing the engineers, in fact, suppressed. I'm not entirely sure how that happened. Armor car. Ooh, could be flanking about. Could be flanking about the pack. Pack is not in a good position. MG needs to retreat. Grenadiers need a panic. And we are seeing another attempt right here at the fuel point. Another, no, a jeep moves in, he's actually going to try and sort of reveal it. An armor car there right in front of the pack. And uh, pack is taking a bit of nasty damage. No panzer trick for the Gunners. Pioneer suffering heavily. Oh, the pack's pointing in the wrong direction again. And we are seeing artillery. Artillery already called in, snipers are retreating. A full retreat once more and BRs up for Smart Hills Infantry. Pack down. Pack is down, armored car. Too close. And that, gent ladies and gentlemen, is why you keep your troops away from where you're bombarding with artillery. He just lost an armored car to his own bloody fault. So that was a bit depressing to watch. But of course, there's still a pack for him to gain if he's always desired. Headset almost flying off there. We are seeing the assault phase. Pack has been secured, getting rushed off. Counter attack by the Germans. Snipers, grenadiers, pioneers. Not really any false grenadiers, so not enough infantry. But there we go. Rifleman did suffer a few nasty losses. No further mines though. Sniper moving up. And again, mines could have been nice. You know, here, 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 here. Everywhere, essentially. Panzerjet. Oh, jeep gun knocked out of control and crashes into the house. Leaving a small little bonfire for some poor German to warm his fingers on. And Ravner getting sniped. American sniper's probably going to try and counter snipe a German sniper. Will he get it off? And Martel, of course, has to be careful. Oh! There we go. Oh, German sniper kept missed on the counter snipe. Americans need to retreat though, and German sn American sniper needs to get the bloody hell out of there. Definitely needs to get the bloody hell out of there. Oh, Pioneer's moving in, and... Oh, missed again! 
Oh, and very lucky sniper. Not so good sharpshooters are we now, are we? A Koenig. Vodka's going to need reinforcements, and we're seeing, in fact, straight for the battle phase. He's probably going to try and rush some armor to sort of try and turn the tides. We're seeing the pack still. We move rapid here. Probably for reinforcements, medics, repairs, all that. Good job. But it is quite interesting to note Smartel is actually pretty unprepared for any sort of armored assault. He's only got one anti tank, and that's one he stole from the Krauts. He hasn't mined the road, so I mean, they could even just rush into his base if they wanted to. That's less good. Wiring off here. That's not a bad idea. That's definitely going to make a sort of direct approach a bit more difficult. Certainly helped by the fact that some bits of garden wall has been blown away. Thus allowing for a more direct closure. Although I'm sure when Pierre comes back home he's going to be a bit wandering while there's part wire through his entire gut. Front yard. Rather now moving in. BRs in the hands. Bunker going up for dive kick. MG42 in the cafe. Mind you, this is not really a good position to actually cover most of the tower because again, you can only you can't fire from this part. And that rather means he's only get to get coverage of this area. Artillery going in, needs to retreat, needs to retreat, look shook, look shook. Oh dear, and here dive kick makes a bit of a mistake again. He's simply making too nice a target. I mean you want to be careful about climbing up your troops when he, you know he's gone infantry. Two snipers, oh one guy went down already. Building does provide protection against artillery, so not all crew is dead right away. But still, needs to retreat the troops. Lost a pack, no infantry though fully. But again, I mean, do be careful about presenting what you could essentially call a too tasty target for your opponent to just, you know, hammer away with. I mean, lots of infantry clumped up, units and buildings and all that. And that's basically begging to get you know, artillery called in. Panther Command though is going up, troops are quickly going to need to be enforced. Pioneers, oh, gunned down by the engineers with a minesweeper. Sniper fire. Germans are pulling back. He's gone defensive, so now he can reinforce from the bunkers, thus creating a bit more of a defensive line right around here. That could work, that could work. And also note he's placed it right next to a building. In particular, of course, this is with the blind side, so that's also nice. But I mean, it will help a bit against artillery, absorb a bit of fire. Rifleman turned to tasty cat food by a hit from a panzer track. Run off. Panzer command almost done. Wehrmacht needs a counterattack, though they barely have anything of the map left. Losing points left and right. More artillery. In fact, we're seeing a howitzer on the map. Hammering away here. He hasn't even managed to salvage that armored car wreck. Bit of a shame. Americans moving in from the north. And again, not really a strong position for dive kick. And the 116th, and now we're seeing more artillery getting called in on the medic bunker. Rifleman getting sniped, I think. First shot misses. Second one doesn't really do much either. Second one does a bit, but again, with defensive and a bit of few abilities, a bunker can in fact become much tougher. In that case, not really a lot of damage was done to the bunker. Rifen again, getting squished by the Panzerschreck, getting sniped, getting shot at. Rifen trying to move up, but the MG's covering that part of their assault. Grenadiers might want to get off a grenade to clear up the Americans from the cover. Fultgrenadiers need to retreat. Don't want to lose another squad. More sniper fire, five kills for that fellow. 17 for this one, he ought to have earned himself in by now. Moving in for the fuel point again. Martel certainly keeping up the pressure, but again, he seems woefully unprepared for any sort of armor from dive kick. And again, he hasn't really seen a lot of more <laughs> units from dive kick. He hasn't really seen, you know, more grenadiers, more infantry, or anything else that could indicate he's not going for something armored. So I mean, there really ought to be a sort of bell going on in the back of Smartel's head that dive kick's going for armor. But apparently, he's not quite aware of that. Which is a bit of a shame. Pack moving up though. Still only three rifleman squads. Four Martel. Bit of a more of a minimum thing. And yeah, sort of realizing, yeah, he lost it in a bit of a silly way. 
pack company opening up. Pack crew actually getting sniped. And of course the MG42 covering the entire approach right here. Jolly good. Raven moving up, getting sniped. One poked his far head out a bit too far and got punished. Victory points are draining down quickly. Ostwin flak pants are moving up. And we're essentially three types of flak pants on the pants of chassis. That was the Ostwin, that was the Wirbelwind, and that was the Möbelwagen. The Möbelwagen was the slightly more curious one. It has a lot more boxy, boxy turret. And well, it actually sort of had to lay down the sort of turret. In fact, lay down the walls before it could shoot at ground targets. So that was a bit of fun, but still, I mean, it actually had the same gun as the Ostwin. Oh, Sniper was way too bloody and cautious there. I do think Smartel is actually getting a bit lazy. Or just a bit unfortunate, I'm not sure what. Pioneers coming under fire, and we're seeing more artillery against the MG. No infantry to actually support this endeavor, though. This is actually a bit risky for him. Ooh, got the pack, though, and there we go. Ostwin moving in, 37mm flak going up on the Americans, firing away, hitting... Well, actually hitting a bit now. Sniper dead though. Lost to the artillery. But at the same time now, the Ostwind has arrived. Ostwind to the rescue. Basically means Eastern Wind. False Gunners versus Rifle. Rifle lets him shoot one. Oh dear, that's a bit unfortunate. And artillery against the German base. Another Ostwind on the way. Knight's Cross or perhaps a Panzer IV thing in this case would have been more preferable in case, you know. Smart Hill has, you know, goes for anything sort of even slightly now, but again, Smart Hill seems to be, again, woefully unprepared. He's not even gotten a tank depot, which, you know, with the advantage he had would have been made sense, you know. Instead, he didn't push his advantage in that direction. And the Howard is actually getting cleared out by the Ostwind. Second Ostwind ready. Medic Bank is still standing, but the medics have not really been able to pull in even one wounded bastard. And the howitzer has been cleared out. Ostwin makes a run for it. As effective against aircraft, it was also against infantry and lighter vehicles. It wasn't heavily armored. Another Ostwin moves up. And again, in this case, one Smartel has actually handled quite a bit of it really smartly. He rather flunked when it came to armor pre preparation. He only had one pack which he'd stolen from the Hun. And now he's getting punished for it. He hasn't even, again, even bothered mining the roads here, which definitely could have helped a bit. Instead, he's now got two Ostwins, no Howitzer, and no AT. Well, he's got an anti-tank on there. That could work a bit. Kind of suffering a bit. MG42. Oh, in this case, it sounds like he's getting a bit too uncautious. Smart Hill sniper up. He's actually losing quite a few snipers, I think, again. He probably shouldn't have been spending that much manpower on snipers. Overall, I mean, he's got, what, four or five? That's a huge amount of snipers. Pack getting recruited. Ostwin getting hammered. 57mm gun also up. Making his way for the bat while so painstakingly laid down by the grenadiers. How could you, Heinz? But again, I mean, I think he's got like, what, four or five snipers again. That's definitely too much, and again, definitely a resource that should be expended towards armor. I mean, one Sherman, and I mean, it would have been game over for Dive Kick. Instead, he have, has inadvertently perhaps even laid the seeds to his own doom. To be sort of, you know, dramatic. I have everything but Exploring in the wounded, and getting sniped. No luck for the medics in Samoa. Of course, the Samoa Medics Union is quite displeased with that. And against Marcel could also definitely benefit from a medic station himself. More artillery in this case, again against the medic bunker. Kind of, yes, an MG's moving in. Anti tank gun opening up a bit as well in the bunker. And we are seeing a half tank. I suspect he might be going for the Stuka of Fuss. Engineers pushed away by the might of the Ostwind. No veterans at all, in fact, for his troops today. He's finally going for the Kampfkampf Center, although right in top of my mind. Perhaps not the most mindful thing. Mindful thing. <laughs> Anyways. And Fox is getting caught right here. They need to retreat. Come on, dive kick. Uksuk. 
Oh, been taking a southern route, and there we go, Terry clearing out the anti-tank gun. Hooray for rockets. Ostwind providing nice support, as again it was a support tank. In that sense, as you probably used a bit like an MG or an anti tank, and again, you know, in support of other units. Preferably. The Huns are taking our territory. And. Coming straight under fire from the anti tank gun. Not sure who's be seeing armor piercing rounds, don't think so. Anti-tank gun still in this case, but the false kind of is, and we are now seeing rangers arriving to lead the way out of Smartel's woes. Enemy Pack though, oh, quickly sniped. That was a bit of a shame. Oswin moves in, veterans he won, so that's good, but he could still be losing it. False guys rushing in. And looks like by killing one crew member, the Oswin did gain enough time to actually escape, albeit heavily damaged. Oh dear, Dark is going to lose a false kind of squad. He should definitely retreat. Oh, oh no, they actually Enemy unit bucked down. up. Oh, that's not his fault. Not his fault at all. Must have been repaired, although now the other one's going to need repairs. MG42 holding up there. Again, more snipers. I really think Martel's making a mistake here. Yeah, he's. I think he's a bit too caught up in snipers because they're really not working out for him, as you might have sort of casually noted, in particular with all the Ostwins. I think, again, he should consider getting some armor himself because, again, one German, one tank destroyer could absolutely ruin the day currently for dive kick. And I mean absolutely wreck it. He would not be prepared himself. Rangers, ready. Rangers have been equipped with the Thompson SMG, but they are coming under fire from the building with its MG. False guys moving up. A few rounds of Tommy gun. Discourage the false guys are following up. Was turned right behind it. And we are seeing another half tax who is clearly going for a small battery of rockets to hammer the Allies into submission. And now Smartel get again is currently on the back foot and he's going for grenades. You need something to stop the Ostwins. Grenades don't stop Ostwins. Orders. Grenades don't stop Ostwins. This isn't coming here too. We can lock grenades into the open compartment. From what I know at least. Oh! Both bazookas dropped! Oh, that was damn lucky. Oh, dear. Just imagine what would have happened if Smart Dive Kick had gotten access to those. The enemy is down to 200 points. Kind of is here. They'll need to retreat. Why are you moving them like that? Dive Kick. That's not too good. More rockets. Rifleman pushed away. And going again for the cutoff point. Very excellently, uh, excellently executed. But again, the ar lack of armor preparation is again what's going to cause him to lose if he does lose. Dive kick though is quickly losing victory points in this. Rifle needs to be careful. There goes Sticky Bomb on the Ostwind. Pioneers moving up. <laughs> Damaged engine. Rifle should not. Oh my! Yo! Oh dear! That was quite quick. That was a lot of men dead right in front of the Ostwind. I mean, you don't generally want to be standing right in front of it, anyways. Snipers moving in. Anti tank gun moving up. Fox is getting sniped. German sniper close by. Revealing himself. Ostwind's moving in. And they are essentially all that's holding dive kicks. You know, evil plans together. If he loses those, he's lost the game, pretty much. And rather, it seems like, you know. It's not really part of Smart Tunnel's plan to actually deal with those. Anti-tank gun though, finally ready. Pack opening up, gets a nice hit. But again, Smart Tunnel's infantry is getting absolutely murderized. Oof, sniper getting hit. Repair bunker up, that's not a bad move. 
He needs to move that anti-tank gun before the half tracks open up. Which again he should be aware of are nearby. And there we go, moving away to a different position so they don't quite get hammered into submission. There we go, just in time. The rockets are flying. And we are seeing the Austrian quickly moving in to hopefully take advantage of it. And the rockets end up doing very little damage. Let's return to dive kick. Going now for the Panzerkampfwagen 4. Anti tank and firing away. MG opening up on the range. And we're seeing more artillery right here on this little clumped up force. Again, you have to be careful about that. It does pre present you know, a nice artillery target. In this case, Dyke Hick gets very lucky somewhat. He could easily have lost both units at the same time to one excellently placed shell. Ospin moves up on the flank. Anti tank and has been cleared up. But second Ospin could move in now. Move it. Luskitz. Come on. Dive kick, you've got the opportunity of ages. Exploit it. And there we go, Rangers holding up, but they need to get out of there. They cannot hold out. While well, lots of heavy munitions wreck the building, and our Panzer Force is going to be joining in with high explosive shells. Sniper down. Oh, he's only got one false gun squad left. 116th Panzer Division is definitely not doing too well. The 116th Panzer Division, by the way, was composed of a... Well, the remnants of the 16th Panzer Grenadiers shattered on the Eastern Front and Reserve Panzer Division somewhere from Brittany, holding a well, coastal position. I mean, it barely actually had any tanks at all, even. It was mostly just a static unit. Which sort of makes it fun. Oh, Fultz is down. He's just lost all of his infantry. Oh, smart dive kick. But nicely handled by Smartel. Dive kick though is really making a lot of mistakes. His only real advantage again is in fact you know the armor and how Smartel was again completely unprepared for it. Panzer 4 being run off. Ostman moving in. A rifleman coming under heavy fire. Lots of rockets. Tank destroyer moving in. Going in after the Panzer 4, although it might want to focus down the Ostvins. Those are again the major issue. No, Smartel's ignoring it. What are you doing, Smartel? You suddenly become a lot more daft. Greyhound moving in from a northern route. Reporting contact in strength. Tank destroyer continues the hunt. Ostvin pulling away. Ooh, hits a mine actually. Entry enough, he placed a mine there. No idea why. Pulling back all of his armored bits. Hack on the way. Greyhound tank destroyer moving in. Careful, there's a mine right there. Machine gun fire raking the tank destroyer, but doing nothing. And oh dear, he's clumping them up and right on the mine. Oh, smart tell. Now the Panzer IV moves in. Falling on its prey. Although well, it could actually end up getting knocked out. Heavily damaged. Further fighting in the remains of the village. And there we go. Bike down. Tank destroyer trying to get away. Rockets flying. He's bombarding his own base. Greyhound mine, in fact. Going off though. Kriegberg's gone. Oh, that's completely reckless. But I suppose it did get the job done. MG recruit. Osman might get it though. No, it doesn't. Huh. We are seeing a rocket of the heavier kind. Panzer 4 getting repaired. Osman trying to get away from the tank destroyer and tank destroyer itself trying to get back. Ritter Kreuzer on the way, that's what we like to see. Ready for order. 
Rangers once more pulling into the house. Martel opening up with his stolen pack once more on the Ostwind. Heavy damage, in fact. Sagan Ostwind getting a bit too close. And Rangers moving in. But again, they should be careful. Rockets, and they are probably going to be hammering away at that anti tank gun. Yes, indeed. And these Rangers need to get out of there now. No, 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 no. Oh, dear. Absolutely wrecked by the Ostwinds. Artillery calling on the repair bunker. Snipers on the Ritterkreuz. Ritterkreuz needs to be a bit careful, though. The Ritterkreuz Träger. Not an actual unit. Yes, there were Knights Cross Holders. They even had a club. But they were not formed into combat units. Oh, got one sniper when they need to get out of there. Oh. That was a bit sad. And the Panzer Force getting heavy anti tank on fire, but he is pulling back out again, which is good. I mean, clearly, the sort of stronger tactically here is my smart I mean, he's really handing himself more smartly. On the other hand, again, the strategic advantage is clearly in the hands of Dive Kick, and that's rather interesting. Because, again, he has the armor and he has proper armor. And he's sort of got proper disposition of it. A good mix of Ostwins, Panzer Force, and some rockets to support it all. So in that sense, he holds the advantage. And I mean, again, in that sense, I mean, tactics without a good strategy is, you know, just inevitable defeat. Well, you know, good strategy without good tactics is just going to be messy and costly. And that rather, this game, you know, rather s exemplifies that quite nicely. Sniper moving in, though. Panther almost ready. Panzer Kampfwagen 5. Ostwind hiding there to protect the victory point. I mean, Mr. Divekick is very low on victory points. Very low. In fact, if Smartel was to make one very serious push, and even if he lost a lot, he could perhaps even drain Divekick of all his victory points. Let's just beat this up. Rifleman again getting caught between all the armor. Panzer Kampfwagen 5 moving up. Panther Panzer. Rifleman being run off. Rifleman caught out in the open. They need to retreat. Sticky Bomb on the Panzer 4. A nice armored push by Dive Kick. Dear, he just lost an entire rifle squad. Anti tank and firing up, but that's in a poor condition. They could go down any second now. And there we go, anti tank on wrecked. Tank destroyed, trying to hold the line. We are seeing another off map coming group. We are seeing two anti tank guns. Tank destroyer needs to pull back. Needs to pull back. Get those anti tank guns forward. Or is he trying to get that Panzer IV? Panther opens up. Ostfens firing away. Panzer IV moving in. Panzer IV down. Panzer come back and fierce in kaput. But the M10 gets screwed up like the paper panzer it is. Panther moves forwards right into the mess of things. Ostwin's just lighting the night up with anti-aircraft fire directly against infantry. Machine gun firing into the rear but doing nothing. Anti-tank guns opening up. Oh, the carnage. The inhumanity. You have only 25 points. You must turn the battle immediately. Wondering about the lack of infantry, of course. Not surprising. Bike on the way to probably try and catch those damn snipers. Oh, oh poor move by Dive Kick. Poor move. Rocket artillery, though, sorts that out. Clumped up a bit too close, and he's just been told. Oh, right, he's gone defensive. And now both anti tank guns are but a memory. Not even archaeologists will be able to find that in the ground. Sniper spotted. Looks like he might make a run for it. Again, though, very close, very close for Dive Kick. He's down to 10 points. Let's return to Smartel. Do things that Rifleman need to consider getting out of there. They're moving in, trying to stop those pioneers. 
Six points left. And some troops down here as well. Oh dear. Four points. Four points. Oh, stabilized at three points. I mean, if Smartel managed to secure even one point again, that's going to be the end of it. Pretty much. Pioneers are going to be getting a bit of a nasty surprise, but at the same time, they're also going to be serving as the early, only early Media warning death. dive kick has, of course, when any sort of attempt down the south. Then path, or down the south, then path. That's really against the Pioneers as well. Oh, dear. American base still pretty exposed, going for an anti tank gun. I might think trying to just for another off map combat group might be his safe, but again, he needs to move through here, take the longest route, but also the safest, and go for this point because, again, it doesn't really seem like dive kick is reacting. No, oh no, don't go for the victory point. Go for the victory point. Oh, for heaven's sake, Smartel, you could have won this. Instead, you're just alerting your opponent to the fact you're there. Oh, Smartel, that wasn't Smartel at all. That was dumb L. That was very dumb L. Now the Raptor, of course, moving in through here. Take the point, at least go for it again. But he should have done in through here. Now the Knights Cross is securing the point. Coming under heavy fire as the Knights Cross move in. Their assault rifles blazing into the night, tearing through the riflemen. Ostwin's tearing into the other riflemen again. He should have gone for the other one, but this is too late now. Panther roars in. Riflemen taking heavy losses, getting murdered, in fact. And what remained of the cemetery. And Sniper getting run down by Knight's Cross in the south as well. And this largely looks like the end for Smartel. More rockets, probably against the anti-tank gun. In this case, does a bit of damage but not full. Knight's crossing into an MG-42 hit by the Americans. Quickly getting suppressed, even the Knights Cross can't see their way through that. Point under attack. And we are going to be what looks like another final oh, he's getting another sniper. I have I mean I think his apparently attempt is to sort of just drain all the infantry so he can't retake the victory point, but again he can't stop the armor, he can't stop the Osman. He needs those Osmans gone, he's always need them gone, but he's failed to do so. I mean the Osmans are just simply countered by armor. And in that sense, Martel has utterly failed. Again, tactically, he's strong. Strategically, he's pretty weak. More artillery and anti-tank gun gone again. Looks like he's moving into the base of the Americans. Artillery against the tanks, but that's not really doing anything. And moving up against that MG up there. And yes, just speeding up those few seconds. Sniper killed in action. And GG, and there we go. I mean, this was a quite interesting game. Again, it sort of round that demonstrated what happens when you have good tactics, but no real good strategy, versus, well, not really good tactics, but still not terrible, and, well, but a good strategy. I mean, the essence that well, rather once dive kick the game wasn't the fact that he was better at hitting infantry, he was pretty bad at it. I mean, all mediocre bad. What he did do well was actually hit Smartel with armor, of course. And the fact was, Smartel was completely unprepared. He should have seen this. He should have seen this coming a mile away. F but he didn't. Again, his strategic sense just isn't good. He couldn't read the opponent going, you know, hmm, I haven't seen any infantry in a while. You know, any new infantry? No support weapons, anything new. In fact, he's probably ought to be going armor, ought to be going through his head. He didn't. All he left was with the pack, and then the Osmans hit him. And he was pretty much buggered. And he just continued for, like that throughout the game. And dive kick wasn't his, that way able to actually hold the advantage pretty well throughout the rest of it, despite snipers. And again, Smartel went, got way too many snipers. He should have gotten some armor again. He should have gotten some armor. So again, a rather nice sort of, you know, contrast of what good strategy versus good tactics. What one? Good strategy, at least better strategy. I mean, I wouldn't call this the world's best strategy, but it was definitely better than Smartel's strategy. And that was what won in the game. Mm, pure and simple. 
So there you go. Do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe and tell your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.